Hey guys, we're talking about the Bucky Factor. I'm Brian Nett from HowardyAlgeWorks.com. We have bite-sized content that's of interest for those in the radiology field. So click subscribe and click on the bell icon if that sounds interesting to you. Again, today we're talking about the Bucky Factor. It doesn't have anything to do with this Bucky or with facing Coach Alvarez on a Saturday afternoon. Rather, the Bucky Factor has to do with when we're imaging, in x-ray imaging, and we put a grid in front of our image receptor, we then need to have a higher dose delivered because some of the x-rays are gonna be absorbed by that grid. That factor is called the Bucky factor. We're also gonna talk about the contrast improvement factor. That's the reason why we wanna use a grid in x-ray imaging is to have a higher contrast in our images. So we're gonna hear about those two things coming up right now. So you're gonna use a grid to reduce the background haze in your image. And the purpose of that is to get better image quality. And when we say better image quality, we're talking about image quality that you can quantify as better because it has a higher contrast. So smaller, lower contrast lesions can be seen better if there's less of that background haze or fog in the image in, in your x-ray images. So we quantify this by saying we have a contrast improvement factor, and that contrast improvement factor we call K. So the contrast improvement factor is the image contrast with the grid compared with the image contrast without the grid present. So if you have a contrast improvement factor K of two, that means your contrast for this type of lesion that you're measuring is going to be twice as high in the case that you have that grid present than that you didn't have that grid. That's what your contrast improvement factor will measure. So we know though there's no such thing as free lunch in imaging. So in general we'll have that contrast improvement factor will be on the order of 1.5 to 2.5. So let's say about a factor of two we can get in terms of contrast improvement factor. But at the same time, we are stopping photons. We're stopping scattered photons preferentially. We are stopping photons, so the image is going to be noisier. So if we want to get the same level of noise at the detector plane, we're going to have to increase the dose, primarily first through the MA, if that's possible alone. Also, we could think about using the MAS. And then if that doesn't work as well, you can think about modifying the KVP. But then that's a more dramatic change, which would also have impact on the contrast as well. So in general, what we're talking about here is that contrast improvement factor won't be a free gain. And their penalty associated with that is that we're going to need more photons coming in. And how can we quantify that? That's where that Bucky factor we talked about at the beginning was. It wasn't Bucky the Badger, but it was Bucky named after Gustav Bucky, who's the inventor of the X-ray scatter grids. And this factor is a ratio again, just like the contrast improvement factor was a ratio, but this is a ratio of the incident intensity on the grid in comparison with the incident intensity on the detector. So that number at the top is going to be higher because that grid is going to be filtering out some of the x-ray intensity. So this is how much is filtered out and consequently how much do we have to raise the patient dose by. So Bucky factor is also the dose to the patient with the grid in comparison to the dose to the patient without the grid. And like we saw Bucky, like we saw contrast factors, we also have some Bucky factors here. Bucky factor will depend on the KVP additionally, but these are kind of average values. You can think of for the average Bucky value, if you have a five to one grid, you're going to need about a factor of two more in terms of the MA on the system. So you will have to take into consideration issues of tube loading when you're considering the scatter grids to use. The contrast improvement factor is really gonna help you out in identifying the lesions better, but at the same time, you have to weigh that against 
the Bucky factor, which is the increase of dose because not all the photons are making it all the way through. Thanks for checking out this video and staying to the end. After this one, check out our overview of scatter and the factors that affect scatter in X-ray imaging.